magical tree. You don't look so good. No siree. Why is it that you no longer have glee? Is it that I'm so lucky? Is it some sort of mystery? Well, uh, did someone happen to charge you a fee? Hi, and welcome to Rock Opera 101. I'm Patula Caesar, the Baltimore Rock Opera Society's Community Engagement Director. And I'm Aaron Keating, the Bro's Executive Director. We've been working on this concert series for about six months, and we're very excited to present it to you tonight. I'll be your narrator for this evening's one-hour live performance, so you'll be hearing from me throughout the show. And for those of you who have seen Bro's live performances in the past, our free shows at Artscape and Light City, or any of our ticketed shows, welcome back. Happy to have you. You're going to see something very different tonight. And for those who haven't seen Bro's before, haven't seen a performance, here's a little bit more about the company. <laughs> Tonight's concert is the first in a three-part series. In between tonight's performance and our next shows on August 13th and September 10th, we'll be doing some additional talkbacks and releasing some live concert footage. So follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and get on our mailing list at BaltimoreRockOpera.org. There will be a ton more content throughout the summer. Lastly, we wouldn't be able to do these concerts without the support of our sponsors, Central Baltimore Partnership and PNC Bank. Thank you so much for helping these artists get paid. Peabody Heights Brewery is also a sponsor. They're an excellent local brewery at 30th and Greenmount and a great community partner. Finally, a big shout out to Human Being Productions and Lighting Dragon Design for their technical support. Thanks. Now enjoy Rock Opera 101, American Music, featuring Jonathan Gilmore. This is Rock Opera 101, Part 1, American Music. Listen as we examine the erasure of Blacks from the evolution of rock music. Listen as we right a wrong. Welcome back. <laughs> so, when the Africans were enslaved, and brought over to this country, we brought over with us many, many of our traditions. One of those traditions, before I start this one, is one that one of my ancestors, Reverend Lucy Ballinger, would say, you know, for any sound issues, for any tech problems, we bind that right now, and that spirit has no place here. That we will move on with decency and order. Mm -hmm. Amen? Now, when we pour libations, we say ashe. And we pour them for those who came before us, for those who are here now, for those who are small, for those who are yet to come. So for those who came before us, all of those Africans, all of the people who fought for us, for the mother of rock and roll, Sister Rosetta Thought, we say ashe. 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 For the man, Chuck Berry, we say ashe. 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 And for the architect, the fabulous, Little Richard, we say ashe. 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 And for everyone in this room, you know, we are practicing social distancing. 
without mask, for everyone who has took the time to work on this, and to stay healthy from all those dangers seen and unseen, we say Ashe. Ashe. And for those little ones who this legacy belongs to, we say Ashe. 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 And we leave some for those yet to come. Ashe. 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 American popular music is built on the African traditional music that came to this country through the kidnapping and enslavement of Africans forced into the United States. The field songs and spirituals these enslaved Africans created from their African traditions created rhymes and rhythms that laid the foundation for all the music created in America since that time. Blues music is this country's original pop music. It was born in the very early 20th century. Its birthplace was the Jim Crow South, where legalized segregation continued to terrorize and oppress blacks. Even though slavery had allegedly ended, they persevered, and the African rhythms lived on.
Jimmy died. I dreamed this was the latest step in a plot being designed to eliminate blacks from rock music so that it may be recorded in history as a creation of whites. Future generations, my dream ran, will be taught that while rock may have had its beginnings among blacks, it had its true flowering among whites. The best black artists will thus be studied as remarkable primitives who unconsciously foreshadowed future developments. Margot Jefferson, Black Culture Commentator. Oh, Everything's gonna be alright. Hey, 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 hey. You're gonna be uh -huh. the greatest man alive. 
that flower. I feel the future, y'all.
If James Brown said it, everything got to be funky then. Y'all know with Jonathan, everything got to be a, a little bit churchy. Just like one of my idols, we gonna do his songs by Sylvester. Now this song is about, I, 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 I want y'all to listen to me just a little bit. Cause this song is about when you climbing that ladder and you trying to reach your dreams. You need to be careful about the people that you step on along the way. Y'all understand me? You understand me? Because them same people that you knock down, you want to meet on your way down. I don't know if you believe in karma. I don't know if you believe in God. I don't know what the hell you believe in, but I can tell you one thing. You better watch out. This is what Sylvester said. Sunrise, sunset, since the beginning, all it has to change, yeah. People fly when they in flight. Huh. And they can't see clearly when they
the poor folks too. Hello again. I hope you're enjoying the show so far. I'm Aaron Keating, the executive director of Baltimore Rock Opera Society. Bros is a nonprofit community performing arts group, and I am thrilled to finally present this concert to you online and entirely free. If you like this concert, though, um, please consider throwing in a couple of dollars to help keep the company afloat. Do us a favor. Go to baltimorerockopera.org slash donate and chip in a few dollars. We have a suggested donation of $10 per person, and you'll be helping keep epic rock theater alive in Baltimore. Baltimore Rock Opera is also fueled by volunteers, possibly volunteers like you. If you'd like to come get involved in what this company does, go to baltimorerockopera.org slash volunteer. You can sign up to audition. You can sign up to design for any of our main stage shows, or just volunteer, make some friends, learn new skills with a really great community of people. Thanks a bunch. Now let's get back to the show. It is jarring and most distressing to walk into a room one has considered private and find it ringed with cameras and spotlights and insistent strangers claiming long acquaintance 
and making plans to move in and redecorate without being invited. Black music, and with it, the black self, was suddenly grossly public, tossed on stage, dressed in clown white, and bandied about with gleeful arrogance that just yesterday had chosen to ignore and condescend. Black, it seemed, had lost the battle for mythological ownership of rock, as future events would prove. Margot Jefferson, Black Culture Commentator. You don't smoke what I smoke. You don't joke like I joke. Hey! 
And y'all know how me and LaBelle room. Nona, Sarah Dash, and Patty LaBelle. The first black group to be on the cover of Rolling Stone. Yeah. They were true rock. Hail Queens. We doing this song for my spirit guy, who I know is here. <laughs> How Keith tell us to sing it? Come on! Somebody somewhere has all the questions to be answered in their mind. Somebody somewhere has all grown impatient with no reason or your eyes. And no more lies shall be told. No more
Oh, yeah. There we go. Y'all better hit it like y'all in church right now. Let him know. We sing more colored than the Africans. There are a lot of colored guys who can sing me off the stage. But half the battle is selling it, not singing it. It's the image, not what you sing. The black wogs and coons and Arabs and fucking Jamaicans and fucking don't belong here. We don't want them here. This is England. This is a white country. We don't want any black wogs and coons living here. We need to make it clear to them they are not welcome. England is for white people, man. We are a white country. These are words from rock royalty. Now, I'm going off script a little bit. These are words from people who actively imitated black artists and got bigger and were able to become rock music. 
They said when Jimi Hendrix died that his guitar playing skills were alien, that it was unheard of. Prince is a footnote. This isn't going to remain. Amen? Amen. We're not going to let this go. We have space in rock music. We are a part of its evolution. I mean, I want every kid to know that loves, every black kid that, that loves rock music, that you are not weird, yeah. that you are not acting white, yeah. that you are not different, that you are just tapping into what your ancestors created. Yeah. And you have just as much right to be in the room as anyone else. This is a part of Black Lives Matter. The pervasiveness of racism has gone through everything in America. So we take this time in music, in art, to say we matter. Black lives matter. We will never forget. Nevasha, this is 